Say I'm the text. Please put him on hold. Yes. I, Professor Kemevra Dikmo Daniel Ponde, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give before this honorable committee shall be the truth, shall be the, truth, the, old truth the old truth, and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So, help me God. so help me God. The chairman of um, this committee investigating uh, alleged financial malfeasance and other activities in the Niger Delta Development Commission, members of the committee here present, the Honorable Minister of the Niger Delta Affairs, the Permanent Secretary um, Ministry of Niger Delta Affairs. I um, want to thank uh, the committee uh, for the opportunity to make a presentation. First of all, I want to um, regret the events of uh, the previous week and uh, just promise that uh, it will not happen a uh, second time. I haven't said that. On uh, the probe of the activities of the Interim Management Committee um, of the NEDC was predicated on the malicious allegation of uh, 40 billion naira missing from the accounts of the NDDC. Mr. Chairman, please. My fellow colleagues, I still remain a little okay? Mr. Chairman, having put our brother I mean, on oath, I expect that um, he's been written a letter, he's been invited, and the issues have been con con conveyed to him, I mean, via, via the referral from the House. So what I expect this morning is that our brother will lay his submission on oath, and then we can speak to the issues, because we can't be talking offhand, you know. Uh, so at... if the erudite professor has made submission to the to the secretariat of this committee, mm -hmm. then we should have copies of his submission, and he should lay same publicly on oath. Here, that is the, that is the, the way we should go. So, Saunku, if you have your submission, please let us have it. Please lay it on oath. Then we admit in evidence, and then we we'll... please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in addition to uh, I remain honourable Dr. Sheikh Koko, in addition to my, what my colleagues have said. Uh, we have to conduct ourselves, speak to the document we, tell, we brought and laid to the committee on oath. That is my own submission. That's why we have to get the document and so that we can speak hand in hand with the, the, the MD of uh, NDDC. Thank you, Chair. I might not have enough uh, copies, but... Um, please let me pass it on to you. I hope the same procedure was used for everybody here. So let, let, let me lay background. Uh, please, Mr. Chairman. Point, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I was. Um, I think you have remedied the damage because what I wanted to say is, just like Waloke said, he has taken oath. He has a document he has presented. 
he should accept that this document emanated from him and then speak to the document, uh, not uh, opening speech. Okay. okay. Uh, Art Team MD. Okay. Yes. Team MD. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir. You receive a letter dated May 15, 2020, requesting you to submit several documents to the committee. Yes, this was. And you responded through your letter 29 June 2020 by submitting a booklet confirming that this is your document. Yes. The document you have there, so. Tell Nigeria, is that the document you submit to the, to the investigating committee? This one here? Yes. Yes, that was submitted, sir. For the records of, you have, you were asked to submit document. Yes. And out of the document you submit, it is only four out of 14, 41 documents that you submit. Correct? I cannot uh, tell you now how many. But, sir, please allow me to make a presentation, sir. Please, sir. Uh, uncle, you see, we on this side were your representatives. Yes, sir. And you elected us. Yes, sir. And we hold you a duty of care. Okay? We will not abuse the privilege you are given to us to represent you. We have rules here. We have rules here. And I'm very happy that my senior brother is sitting next to you, you know, who has been on this side in the past. So now you've heard Mr. Chairman, and you confirm that the letter was written to you. And in response, you have this report. This submission, which I've confirmed is your document, yes. that the, you are the author, you are the maker, yes. isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, you should lay that document and then we take it and then we now cross-examine you. Because all you have to say, we have to speak to, the, to no, your document. submission, okay? So let's have, can we have a copy of your submission, then we can now ask questions based on what you have submitted. And then it's sort of won't waste time. Chairman. Chairman, sorry. Chairman, my comment. Thank you, Chairman. Uzoman Kimai Bonta is my name. Oh, well, he's been invited via letter. He's here. He has his documents. Let him give his document or speak to it. Thereafter, tender whatever he does. He has commenced. We, the time is of essence for us because um, the place is tight and we have to observe COVID-19 procedures. Therefore, what am I saying? He may decide whichever way to commence his um, uh, pleading or whatever he wants to call it. If he decides to start from bottom to up or up to down, the important thing is that we will hear his testimonies and if he's run short of what we ask him to bring, he will go get it for us. For now, what is he with? Let's hear him. Let's say the document is having, he has comments. We are wasting another time. That's what I think, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, the procedure we have followed since the day we commenced, Mr. Chairman, is that the documents are presented and then they are adopted when uh, presented. We now, based on that presentation, we now question those who brought those documents based on what they have already presented. If we say that we should go the route of asking every respondent to present documents and take time to talk about the documents before we question, then we're not going to live here today. We already have the documents that have been circulated. We have studied them. What we've got to do now is to raise questions from those documents. Mr. Chairman, I so submit. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for the for yielding. Uh, acting MD, acting MD, acting MD. With me here is a letter from the committee, dated 15 May 2020, requesting you to supply to supply 27 for. 41 documents to the committee. 41 documents. 
You only submitted four documents, which are before us and before you. That's why we insisted that you have to lay those documents out, and we speak to the document. That's the fact, and this is the procedure of the House. If you want me to read it and tell you what and what we requested you to supply to the committee, I can do that. But I think we don't have much time. The documents are here, and I believe you have the, uh, the, the letter. We can speak on the document. That's the proper procedure. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, sir. Honorable colleague, please, let's be focused. Acting MD, you have the document. Speak to the document. I will need to lay a background to speak to these documents. First of all, um, the statistics from the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Accountant General's Office stated clearly that from the 31st of October 2019 to the 31st of May 2020, that the sum of 81.5 billion Naira was spent by the two IMCs. But what we're seeing in this committee is that like that 81.5 billion was spent in four months by the second IMC. Those are the things I was trying to lay down. That uh, for record purposes, the Central Bank and the Accountant General's Office cannot change the figures in one week because that they stated on that oath in the Senate ad hoc committee hearing that 81.5 billion was spent from October 2019 to 31st of May 2020. They also stated that from January 2020. Uh, point of order, General. Point of order. Thank you. Uh, at TMD, just so, so I, have, I have a valid point to make. Uh, at TMD, at TMD, we, we had a presentation from Central Bank. We had presentation from the Accountant General Federation. We had presentation from BPP. Just tell us from your own side, from your own side, forget with the CBN, forget with the Accountant General Office, whatever you tell us, you are not competent to tell us that. That's why they came, they laid the report and we cross-examined, they give us what we want and they left. You can't just come and talk about somebody that you are not there. Talk about NDDC, not CVN and, okay. and, the, and, and the Accountant General Office, please. That's no, my take, Chair. No, no problem, sir. So, honorable colleagues, please, let's allow the MD, the acting MD to talk. Let him talk to us, speak on the document, please. Thank you. So, from January, to 31st of May, 34 billion Naira was remitted from the federal government to the NDDC. Now, out of the expenditure from 31st of October 2019 to 31st May 2020, the 81.5 billion, this IMC spent 59.1 billion, which is very verifiable. Out of the 50, 9.1 billion, it's also verifiable that 38.6 billion was spent on capital projects. The IMC published a list of uh, contractors who had been paid up to the 5th of May in the national dailies, 35.3 billion, and no contractor has said it was not paid. Now, all this, the IMC did not give any of those contracts. They are historical contracts that had been existing before we came. On recurrent expenditure, 20.5 billion was expended by the current IMC between uh, 20th of February and 31st of May 2020. Um, it's good to note that a large proportion of the payments were for backlog of expenditure that previous managements had incurred and uh, did not pay. And uh, due to continuous pressures and uh, embarrassment from creditors, the IMC decided to clear these debts. For instance, duty uh, uh, tour allowance had not been paid for almost three years to the workers. And we, 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 we cleared that. Trainings and workshops. 
the scholarship students, we have not awarded a single scholarship. Each of them is entitled to what is called a takeoff grant. And has not been paid for years. We paid from 2016, they have not been paid. We paid 500,000 naira each, which is what they are due. Um, all the hotels in Port Harcourt are being owned by NDDC. We didn't uh, uh, create those. We paid those ones. They all added up to the uh, recurrent expenditure. There was no electricity in that building, the headquarters building, because of 26 million naira. We've cleared that, and electricity has been connected. The Transcorp building is being owed 30 million, uh, million naira up to today for over one and a half years. All the media houses are being owed. Patrick Oke and Co. have not been paid for about three years for NDDC today. Sir, I'm just explaining the recurrence so that. Um... Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, I think we need to lay the foundation properly. Uh, the MD, acting MD. I will wait for questions. I'm coming, sir. Acting MD, I just want to guide you. Post one to section 80, 81 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You cannot touch a dime. You can't spend a dime, except in a manner prescribed by the National Assembly. So I will expect you, because I've produced your submission, sir, and I've okay. also seen the letter written to you. So for us to be able to flow seamlessly, you know, so that everybody will be on the same page, I expect that you should lay your approved budget where you derive the strength to spend the money you are, you are telling us. So that document is very key, sir. The, I'm, I'm talking about the, you resume work when? You resume work when, sir? Uh, uh, 20th of uh, February. February? Yes. Okay, so it is important. If we have your approved budget, be it 2009, which one did you meet on grand? The, um, no, the funds for NDDC comes from two parts. Mm. In the federal government budget, that Either was way, yeah, I've in, seen the various streams of income. In 2017, I mean, in, in December uh, 2019, approved 80 billion naira. No, sir, we, no, excuse me, sir. For, we for that, NDDC. MD, MD. Actually, yes, MD. Sir. We want that document, okay. the, your approved budget, which you are operating. I know you resume job, you resume work sometimes in February. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, we got a letter for budget 20th of March. For which year? For the 2019 budget. 2019 budget. Yes. So you are operating 2019 budget, budget, isn't it? Yes. So we need to have that document, okay? okay? If you have it, please, can we have it? Yeah, I have this, I promise now. I have this document just now. Yes, sir. Because we have record of what you have done here, what you have spent, both on personnel, both, both on uh, overhead and capital. Please, please. Uh, so please, Mr. Mr. Chairman, let us, uh, let us have that approved uh, document, please. This is the correction of this. Let me see. This one is just approved this thing. Sir, excuse me, sir. This is the a covering letter conveying the. This is a communication of between the, the clerk of the National Assembly and SGF. What I'm asking you is this: yeah. the approved budget which you're operating. Yes. The approved budget that you're you're operating. Can we have it? Uh, Prof. Prof, you know you can't put nothing on up on You can't put something on nothing. So the foundation, the ground of, is where is your, if we have a food budget, which you're operating, then we'll now be cross-checking whether what you have, we are spending, we are spending is contained this. in the budget. We'll, we'll make that available to you, sir. Okay, Mr. Chairman, just take note that we need to have the approved budget, budget. okay? No problem, sir. So, um, I'm not going to the other things there, except I, I'm asked. But I just wanted to lay, I said I just wanted to lay a foundation. So you have told us what you have spent on overhead. Yes, yes sir. You've told us a scenario of contractors who have worked, who have not been paid for years. You've talked about people who have their bonuses 
DTA outstanding for three years, yes, yes. which you have cleared. Yes. And so my worry was, okay, where is where did you take those money from? And that's why I was asking for the approved budget. budget. We'll, we'll, so if we'll, we have the approved budget, we'll bring then it you, 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 you show us the approver for paying where provision has been made for those items. Even historical debts? Yes, historical debts. Okay, we'll show you. Yes. Sir. We'll show so you, that sir. is because if you don't see, you see, budget planning, budget formulation stems from provisions of Procurement Act. Okay, no problem, if you, sir. If you go to section 20, section 21, section 18 of Procurement Act, you will see our budget should be, should be prepared. Yes. When you are preparing your budget, did you do needs assessment? Did you come up that, okay, you are owing extra Z contractors? Their jobs, have they been, do you have certificates approved? Were they accommodating your procurement plan? Assuming you are not starting, I'm coming, sir. Assuming you are not starting new projects. If you are starting new projects, were they accommodated? Did you tell Nigerians the method of procurement you are going to use? This is the foundation we need to lay. Then we now begin to see justification for it. in the money, in the money, in the funds you are spending. No problem, sir. You 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 get that, sir. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask the acting MD. Please, uh, MD. Please, have you finished? Please, the leader, the leader of the house is here, please. Have you? The leader of the house is here. Chairman, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, please let's make progress. Yeah, I have here the appropriation bill 2019 with the statutory transfers to the NDC. No, sir, just give us a copy, please. Uh, class, Secretariat, let him lay it, let's have it. But uh, we need the copy back. Please make a copy and give us back. MD, we are waiting for you, please. We are waiting for you. No problem, sir. The... We, we... Sir, sit down. Go sit down, sit down, it's okay. Sit down, sit down.
Yeah. Over the course of our presentations by different people, sir. No. Objection. Please. The document. The budget. Please lay it. I've, um, we are making copies to bring to you the uh, 2019 Appropriation Act, in which there is clear provision of money for NDDC, sir. Okay. We'll, gi we'll give that to you. Okay. Just round up. Well, we have uh, uh, documents we will have wanted to hand over in response to majority of the accusations that have been done against us. I don't think um, we need to present these things. And I should be given a chance to explain these things. If not, because it's been put into the public domain. Somebody talked about uh, Infant Jesus. You were reading the, 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 and we have all those documents to, to, to debunk all those things. People, sir. There is a route called uh, Infant Jesus in uh, Asaba. Please, Secretariat, take and, and see. Act in MD. Act in MD. Yeah. Act in MD. You recall that when I raised my observation earlier, yeah, I, 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 I pleaded with the chairman okay. that we should respond to those things. Yeah. Because we are being uh, crucified in Chairman. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, point of order. Uh, Honorable Ben, go ahead with your point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, because time is of the essence, and the minister, the uncommon minister, is sitting quietly, we need to finish quickly with the MB so that we can take him. The way we are going, we might end up wasting a whole lot of time on this particular witness. Our procedure has always been, once you are taken on oath and you have adopted your document, questions will come out of the document because this document has been in our possession since they laid it. They only formally adopted it today under oath. Those questions we we'll ask will give rise to him calling for further documents to explain the questions we threw at him. But for now, going, leaving him to explain to the end of the day, I don't think he's going to do us a great service. Let us speak to the document that have been laid before us, ask questions, and in the course of answering the question, he is allowed to bring in any document that will help to clarify whatever he want to present before us. Please, that is what I want to present to you. Order sustained, uh, Honorable Ben, your point of order is sustained. Yes, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Chairman, no. sir. No. The, the yes. way, uh, excuse me, MD, excuse me, excuse me. You finish your presentation. Um, now, now, Mr. go straight to the presentation, the key points, the money received, the key point, I like it. Then, then you come out so that we can continue, please. Mr. Please. Chairman, point of order. He has, he brought a document which he has adopted. That is his presentation. We ought to start questioning him based on the presentation he has made. He has, you don't need to speak through the document again. He has adopted it, sir. Let us go into questioning so that we can face other persons. Mr. Chairman, sir. The, the chairman's ruling stands. The chairman's ruling stands. And we should go by the chairman's ruling. Mr. The chairman's, chairman's ruling stands. Mr. Chairman, sir. Um, for fair hearing, somebody spoke on Friday for almost two hours without 
interruption without even um, uh, speaking to any uh, uh, documents. The, those who have been coming to accuse us have come, there's another one called to come again today. He has extra information. And people are giving chance, and me, I'm putting a straight jacket. Just do only this. Please, sir. Please, sir, allow me to do my presentation. Yes, somebody. Chairman. MD. Yes, sir. MD. Chairman, sir. Please. Honorable member, please. A MD. Yes, sir. Go ahead with your presentation. Thank you very much, sir. The, when I started, I was trying to lay a background of everything that happened. I'm going to hand over a file. Please, where is the secretariat? Containing the reasons why we asked... Um, the chairman to recuse himself. Then um, I'll go straight to the point about the different things. We've been accused of uh, the scholarships. Um, we didn't give scholarships, but we've, we, we had the report that myself and uh, Dr. Cairo, that we paid ourselves scholarships. And the basic truth is that we were processing these scholarships for these students before the late EDFA died. And just as we were about to submit it, we had the, uh, accusations that our children were in the scholarship list. This had to be brought back and scrutinized. What basically happened is that like the universities invited the NDDC to visit for verification and for graduation. They gave the letters and Esther Code was prepared the preparation of the Esther code started before I got to NDDC. I only approved it, and it was paid on the 16th of April. Because you cannot pay somebody Esther code the day the person is going to the airport. You have to get a visa procured. There is a long time. If the journey is not made, it is for us to, to return it. But somebody will come here and come and say, uh, Cairo paid millions to his account for foreign scholarship. Please, we need to debunk that. Right now, as we speak, the scholarship payments is being processed, and this week we clear the scholarships from 2016. Um, the forensic audits, we've been accused of every type of thing. The forensic audit is ongoing, and uh, I will not go into that. The NDDC does not have control over the forensic audits. Our job is to provide the enabling environment and provide the requisite documents and whatever they need. Somebody here said the headquarters building is um, um, so, uh, 74 or whatever. Please, uh, I will have put this on the slide to show you the pictures of where the state is now. Myself and Dr. Cairo, we occupy the 12th floor. That's where we work from. Uh, then um, when we came in, the staff morale was very low. Staff had not been promoted for four years. We cleared backlog of, uh, 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 of these promotions. Sorry, this is the uh, secretariat. Postponing the trip. Take this one for Infant Jesus and uh, Vincent Peter Road. Then, um, um, bad uh, working environment. Somebody, if you have. Infant Jesus is a road in Delta State, in Asaba. Please. Um, The environment in the NDDC headquarters today is very poor. If you've been there, cramped, packed rooms. So somebody's talking about there's no justification to go to a new headquarters building that's been going on for almost 20 years. Lassa fever kits, maternal delivery kits, science equipment for secondary schools, all those contracts and payments were before the IIMC2 came on board. We didn't do any Lassa fever payments. Last half of our payments, let me give you the expenditure profile of the IMC before me so that you can see the payments. I'm going to give you the documents of the last half of our kits and everything before we came in. Then um, I think I'll stop for now. But the thing is that like, um, we've gone through a media trial 
and be judged. I've seen all things about face of a thief, my face, face of a thief, for, with no proof of me stealing anything. I'm going to get documents to hand over to Secretariat so that you can, uh, uh, thank you. Hello. Honorable colleagues, uh, you heard the MD. So, is any member that has question in relation to the presentation that you have made? Mr. Chairman. 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 Honorable Ben. Bakwa, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Honorable Ben Roland Igbakwa. I represent Ethiopia East, Ethiopia West, and by the special grace of God, we're from Delta State. MD, sir, you know you are my brother. Who authorizes the information that leaves NDDC? I want it to be interactive. Sorry, what, what, type of what you publish in pages of newspaper and television interviews? Television news. We, we have a, a corporate affairs uh, directorate. Who authorizes them before they go out? I do. You do? Yes. On, on Monday, June 29, 2020, okay. there were a, a number of daily newspaper publications signed by one Charles Audley, Director of Corporate, Headquarter, uh, corporate Affairs. And in that publication, you said, that's as a June 29, because just here now, you told us May that you've only paid about 30, 38 million. And in that publication, the total you said you have paid was 35 million, 353, uh, 35 Can you explain the discrepancies? between what you just told us and that publication, if you actually approve that information out to the public. I actually approve this, and even in this my small report, it is clearly stated there that as per the 31st of May, 38.6 billion had been paid for projects. The but publication is for June 29. Yes, it's we are showing 35. what had been paid as per the 5th of May, when the National Assembly made the allegations of a 40 billion era missing. We needed to show that there was no 40 billion era missing, so we calculated the payments as per that 5th of May, and that's what was published. Now, but what was what you have paid as at May is 38. 38.6. And as at June, you added more to it? Of course. You do fresh payments? I mean, like uh, the NDDC is not a bank. We don't save money. And as I said, we're trying to clear um, backlogs of, because we have cases in the court, Ganeshi others. We just even finished paying um, a contractor who won cases against us, 400 million naira. Okay, that's and, one. And because of that. Don't worry, that's, that's good, that's good. You told us, we have listened to you. We listened to what you did in the Senate where you said that a whopping 1.5 billion is to take care of ourselves. Is there any budget line to authorize that take care of ourselves in the budget of 2019 that we approved for you? I, I, I mean, like, um, if I had said uh, take care of ourselves, I must have said that in and, anger. And yes, sir. Please. You are before this committee. Answer the question direct. Because you are under oath. I'm under oath. Yes. yes. Answer the question. That the 1.5 billion, 1.5 billion COVID-19 palliative you took. It was not 1.5 billion, please. The figure is shown clearly. Tell us, tell us the figure. It's 1.32. 1 1.32. Yes. Billion. Yes. 1.32 billion. Yes. Now the question the honourable man, honourable House member is asking you. Yeah. 
where did you have a, the budget line in 2019 where you derived that power to spend that money? That's the I'll, question. I'll, I'll, I'll provide that answer for you. I will check. I don't want to lie on that oath. I will provide the answer for you. Uh, MD. <laughs> MD. MD. Yes, sir. I know you are a very learned person. You are one of the most learned person in this room. You don't, you don't have answer for it now. Okay. It means you spent money. Can you agree with us? Will it be right for us to say that you did extra budgeted expenses, which was not budgeted for? Uh, I will not say so. Um, let me ask my EDP to explain, because I don't want to... I think he has more facts concerning that. Is he under oath? Okay, it's not under oath. That's why I said that we provide the answer. I said I will provide the answer. Now, uh, MD, you have the budget with you. The budget of 2019, you have it with you. Correct. MD, 2019 budget in which you have told this committee that you is the budget you are operating on. You have it. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I said I will provide the answer to you. No. You have the budget with you. In front of me, yes, sir. The budget. The budget you are operating. 2019 budget. I will provide the answer, Mr. Chairman, sir. No. We'll bring this to you, sir. Ah, we'll bring this to you. It will be sent to your committee. MD. MD. Mr. Chairman, sir. MD. Mr. Chairman, sir. The budget of 2019, you tendered it. Yeah. I tendered the... You tendered the budget of 2019. Yeah. I give the letter from That is you. not the budget. That's not the budget we signed. The budget we signed for you in 2019, you have it here. Okay, they said they have gone to make up this. I said huh? I will provide this to you. Okay, you, don't, you don't have the budget here. Yes, I don't have it here. You don't have the budget I here. I don't have it here. It will be provided to you. But I don't know if other people will... Mr. Chairman, sir. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, sir. Please. Mr. Chairman. My leaders and colleagues, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, may I request that uh, the clerk of the Secretariat furnishes this gentleman a copy of the budget we approved for him? If you, don't, if you are not harmed, because I've read the letter given to you, you have various documents that you are asked to furnish this committee. So if you don't have the budget here, our, we have a committee on library and research. The clerk, please get us a copy of the 2019 approved budget for, this, for, the, for the acting MD. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, no, I'm coming. I'm coming. Please, my honorable colleagues, I would love the chairman to allow the acting MD to ask the other person to take an oath so that he can answer the question, not till we wait for him. Please. See, MD, uh, my leaders and colleagues, post on to section 20. It is the MD yeah. that we have business with here. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Don't worry, sir. We will help you. We will help you to get to, to that everybody gets justice here. Me, Madam Clark, let's have a copy of the approved budget. Then, Mr. Chairman, my colleagues, we, start be we now begin to look at all the expenditure he has incurred, whether they are contained in the budget or not. Uh, and if the debts we are paying, if they are captured in the budget, we also see it there. It is there we can come to a conclusion. A procurement uh, scholar is there. <laughs> yes. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Ms. MD, please. From the report that you have given, the financial report, acting MD, from the financial report, how much did you receive any time being? How much 
did you receive? In the, from the time this interim management committee has been set up, how much has the interim management committee received? There's no its own committee. Thanks. Yes. From uh, the federal government remittances. In, in total, I'm trying to break them. We get about 6.4 billion monthly, which stopped in uh, June. Well, we've not done anything since June. Then we have some payments from the oil companies, very little. Um, I'm I, I, I had computed it before, but MD, yes, sir. You are the chief accounting officer of the commission. I agree with you, sir. How much have you received? This interim management committee, how much have you received so far? So far, this interim management committee will have received about 72 billion. Mr. Chairman, in accounting parlance, we don't say about two plus two is four. So, uh, acting MD, with documentary evidence, I will provide that. No, sir, excuse me, sir. If you don't have them here, then we are being ambushed. Then we're not able to do anything. So, we have to speak to records. No meanders. Let us speak to records. Your DFA should be handy. It should be around you here to support you, to help you. You came on board in February, between February and uh, July, or June, let's say June, how much have you received from various sources as captured in the Act, setting up NDDC? Setting up section of NDDC Act. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, while while the MD is trying to while the MD is trying to give us how much you receive from January to date, MD, I have a question for you. You paid Acting MD. You paid six hundred and forty one million naira to clear point communication. Six hundred and forty one million to clear point communication. You paid to them as the MD of NDDC. Is that money budgeted for in twenty nineteen? What are the money meant for? 641 million to clear point communication. What are the purpose of the money paid to them? And is this money budgeted to uh, 2019 budget, uh, budget for clear point communication? Thank you. Yes, sir. This money is part of the 2.5 billion naira that is in for the forensic audit in the 2019 budget. Andy, yes, sir. please speak out. Speak out. For the 2019 budget, there was a proposal for 2.5 billion for the uh, forensic audit, out of which about um, 1.2 was approved. And out of that, um, I think uh, 318 was approved for the lead forensic auditors and only a small percentage has been paid out before the uh, budget expired on the 31st. Yeah. Did you didn't say anything about that. Okay. MD. Yes, sir. I believe I'm going to ask questions and should be answered so that Nigerians should know. Yeah. I said, this money you paid to clear point communication, the money entails for what? What did you contract? Okay, the purpose for the... Just hold on. Hold on. What this money entails for? 
And is this money budgeted in 2019? That's my question to you. Okay, thank you very much. The money was paid to Clearpoint Communication for a variety of uh, purposes all related to the forensic audits. The, there are 185 local government areas and each of them was budgeted for 3.46 uh, million one uh, allowances for coordinators per local government area, training for the coordinators, setting up of um, information desk for the coordinators. These coordinators are the people to identify the sites of all the projects in the NDDC area. Because part of the problems, if you read the Auditor General's uh, 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 report on NDDC between 2008 and 2012. Okay, hold on. You contracted Clearpoint Communication to itemize or point the project you have in NDDC areas? Is that what you're trying to say? They will get local people in each of the local government. They will recruit local people in each of the local government areas to identify these uh, sites. The site for what? While the MD is trying to, while the MD is trying to give us how much you receive from January to date, MD, I have a question for you. You paid Acting MD. You paid six hundred and forty one million naira to clear point communication. 641 million to clear point communication. You paid to them as the MD of NDDC. Is that money budgeted for in 2019? What are the money meant for? 641 million to clear point communication. What are the purpose of the money paid to them? And is this money budgeted to uh, 2019 budget, uh, budget for clear point communication? Thank you. Yes, sir, this money is part of the 2.5 billion naira that is in for the forensic audit in the 2019 budget. Andy, yes, sir. please speak out. Speak out. For the 2019 budget, there was a proposal for 2.5 billion for the uh, forensic audit, out of which about um, 1.2 was approved. And out of that, um, I think uh, 318 was approved for the lead forensic auditors, and only a small percentage has been paid out before the uh, budget expired on the 31st. Yes. It didn't say anything about that. Okay. MD. Yes, sir. I believe I'm going to ask questions and should be answered so that Nigerians should know. Yeah. I said, this money you paid to clear point communication, the money entails for what? What oh, did you contract? Okay, the purpose for the... Just hold on. Hold on. What this money entails for? And is this money budgeted in 2019? That's my question to you. Okay. Thank you very much. The money was paid to Clearpoint Communication for a variety of uh, purposes all related to the forensic audits. The, there are 185 local government areas and each of them was budgeted for 3.46 uh, million. One, uh, allowances for coordinators per local government area training for the coordinators, setting up of um, information desk for the coordinators. These coordinators are the people to identify the sites of all the projects in the NDDC area. Because part of the problems, if you read the Auditor General's uh, 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 report on NDDC between 2008 and 2012. Okay, hold on. You contracted Clearpoint Communication to itemize or point the project you have in 
NDDC areas? Is that what you're trying to say? They will get local people in each of the local government. They will recruit local people in each of the local government areas to identify these uh, sites. The site for what? Where the NDDC projects are. Okay. Because most times when they go for uh, inspection, people are not able to locate these projects. And so we needed local people who will guide and so also... You pay, hold on. So you pay six for one million for a clear point communication, co maybe a consulting company, to locate, to ask people to locate no, projects no, of NDDC? Excuse, uh, listen, Your sir. own project. Listen, sir. The people need to be trained also. Okay. As pointers for projects. If you... Listen, listen we... We were trying to change the narrative. If you... Just leave. I, I, I didn't finish. I, I can... I, I still... So, sorry, please. Sorry. So, so the clear point, the only work we contract clear point to do is to ask people to no, point no, no, project no. for you. Clear point has been a consultant in the NEDC before I even came in. Clear point has been. But uh, it's named clear being, point communication. They are putting desks, tables, and I mean, I mean, help desks, communication desks in all the places to locate the projects. Okay, is that is that budgeted in 2019? Is 641 budgeted for clear point in the line item of 2019 budget? Is it budgeted for that purpose to clear point communication? I wouldn't say it was uh, clear points is written in that budget. That's a line item. I don't think so. Okay. Again, you paid 536 million naira to a company with the tagging of the campaign Save Life in the Nara Delta area. That company, we want to know the company. And uh, is this 531 million equally budgeted for to save lives of Niger Delta people? That's another question for you. Save life campaign. 536 million Naira. You paid it. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out issues based on the report you give us to the committee. 641 to clear point communication, 536 to save life campaign in the adult area. I will need to check and get back to you. You need to check? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Next thing. Who should be saving life? Mr. Chairman, thank you for yielding the floor to me, Mr. Chairman. Do I have the floor? Yes. Yeah, you all right. Mr. Chairman, um, MD, uh, the first point I want to make is that you should not be irritated that we are asking you questions about the budget under Section 80 of the 1999 Constitution, which guides us. Okay. Apart from lawmaking, the other job we do is oversight. We have this power of the post. It's one of the strongest, the, one of the most important powers we have, power of the post. That post is the budget. And that is why virtually every question we are asking you here has to do with the budget. The budget is very important, even to private individuals because you are not expected as an agency to spend money outside your budget. I hope you know that. Yes, sir. Now, you told us under oath right here that you are still preparing to pay money to students who are on scholarship. Now, we are aware that you don't have a 2020 budget yet. What you are operating is the 2019 budget, which, as you know and as we know, ended May 31st, 2020. We are now in July. So you are not expected to be spending money from budget 2019. It has expired. From where are you going to spend this money you said here on oath that you are preparing to pay students who are on scholarship? Are you aware that every expenditure you make from 31st May till date 
are not uh, are not Hello! 